So today is the start of a new series where we will be building an online shop completely with open source tools and it will be a real life project that will be actually selling stuff online. So let's have a look. So we will be building a headless online shop and the tools that we are leveraging are Next.js, Strapi and Shopware. So Shopware you might not be so familiar with, it's quite very well known e-commerce online platform from Germany and it is open source as well. And how we will build that will be as follows. So we will have Next.js as our front end and then we will have Strapi as our headless CMS. And then we will use Shopware as our e-commerce backend. So Shopware is traditionally not a headless system, but with the recent version, it was made API first, so you can properly use it in a headless context. So what we will do is, um, what you often see, for example, is that in that scenario, what people are doing is they will be copying the product data into the headless CMS and then extending the product data here. So we won't do that. Um, we will not copy data back and forth, but rather we will have clear ownership of those services in what they have to do. This will be having the product data. But it will not only have the product data, but also the product categories. And then they will maintain the cart, for example. And it will also have the order, status, handling, and the payment, handling. So those things will be uh, the area of the shopware um, service. And then on the other side, we have basically Strapi. And this will obviously consider of the pages and uh, page contents. But then also Strapi will be uh, the thing that contains the product content and also the category content. So that means that we will have a separation. Everything that is content will live in the CMS, but the product data will live in shopware. So for example, name, SKU numbers, but also prices. So those things will live in, in shopware. Um, so this is very important to understand like what is where because they are uh, things from product in Strapi but also in Shopware but it's very clear at least for me um, what data exactly lives where. And then we will have Next.js and Next.js will be of course our uh, front end so basically the website but it will also be the integrator if you want. So um, there are different approaches how you could do that. But for this shop, I will do it a bit differently than I did before. And we will integrate things on the Next.js backend level if you want. We can also divide that if you will into Next.js front end. And then obviously Next.js has a server side. So we have a Next.js backend. And the backend will be the part that will aggregate the data. And what I mean from that is, for example, let's say you would call a page product one. And then product one is the URL of a product that we find in Shopware. That means for this product, it will have a product SKU number. So the SKU number will be our identifier. And then with this product SKU number, what the Next.js backend will do is it will gather the data, the product data, like the price and all that stuff. But it will also obviously be able to get like the internal idea of the product from the e-commerce system so you can add it to cart. But then also the product SKU will be on the Strapi side as well for the product content. 
and then the next JS backend will be the driver that basically sees okay there is a URL that is opened and then it will start accessing the the information it will basically uh, try to understand okay so this is a product the, this URL is a is a is product one but what is it actually is it a product is it a category or is it a content page so this is something that the backend will figure out by using those services if this page will be called because what i don't want to do is things like that so for example you could do it like this and then for example uh, about us or something so so you could also do it like this that you have this p then you know it's a product you have a c then you know it's a category so you need to um, get those uh, information like the SKU number first from the from the e-commerce backend and so on but i don't want to do that because i want my urls like nearly any url start from the root so i always want to have my product as a from the ul perspective uh, being like this and then also you can have shoes or something which is a category and then you would have a red shoe and then you would have the about us page for example so the thing is what you don't know now is uh, actually what type of page is this so the first thing that you would need to do is you need to understand and gather the relevant data so what we will do is more or less ask the shopware cm the, the shopware e-commerce system our e-commerce backend so to say but also our headless cms we will pass the path forward to those obviously that will be done in parallel and then from that we will derive and understand okay so this is a product in this case a red shoe for example it is a product and then we would also get back the like the entity id so in this case it's the product id if it's a category it's a category if it's a page it could be the page id so if we know what it is, it is a product with this entity, then we can start fetching uh, the actual data. So we can start fetching, for example, in the case, we would ask Strapi get product by uh, the product entity ID, which will be the SKU. We would be able to also ask the, the shopware backend uh, to get the get relevant product information. And then once we have all those, obviously we will be rendering the page. Yeah, so that, that's basically what is going to happen. And then, for example, once we add to cart or something, we will do that against where backend. And so one thing that is, is also a consideration to make is the user authentication. So let's say a user wants to register. Uh, so now you kind of have a bit of a dilemma because you have two systems that are both able to handle user authentication. Um, so there would be different strategies how to do that. So with Shopware, it's unfortunately not that easy to put in an auth provider, at least not for the uh, customer authentication. So you have a Shopware backend there, you can do that. But for the customer authentication, typically the user authentication data is stored in Shopware itself, uh, at least in the open source, like the community edition, which we will use. You can, for example, then do the authentication in Strapi and then have Shopware orders only uh, with basically guest orders. So in Shopware, you can have guest orders. And then in Strapi, you can have different auth providers that's something that we need to think about so i i did it in a couple of ways um actually not 100 percent sure yet uh which strategy we will follow um one in this scenario that would be the easiest is just to use the shopware auth because in the strapi cms there is not necessarily that much user related data but in shopware there is because there are orders there is the the wish list uh, the basket, the addresses, uh, for example, this lives in, in Shopware. So it has much more user related data, but the downside of that is, well, it's like local, 
local data, right? And it's not necessarily the best idea to store the user data, uh, the user of data yourself. And then also adding things like logging with Google and stuff won't be that easy. Yeah, so that's something that we need to further decide on the go. Yeah, but that, that's basically the game plan. So what are the things that we have to do? What we have to do is obviously set up <coughs> shopware. We need to set up Next.js. We need to set up Strapi. All that being done locally. What we will do is implement all the necessary uh, e-commerce components in Next.js. So that that will actually be the that that's the vast part basically. So there's a lot of things that you need to implement. Um, to be fair, I'm not starting from scratch, um, so I have a lot of those things. But we will basically see and look into all the components that we need. We would need in on the page level. We need to have content pages. We will need to have category pages with sorting and filtering. We want to have product pages. We need to have a shopping cart. We want to have a checkout process. And then also we want to have search. And then we will also want to have user auth and more or less like a user section where we can see the orders and, and things like that. Additionally to that, we will also need to have um, email flows, like your order was uh, accepted or created and then um, order was, was shipped or something like that. So those things we also need, which uh, Shopware is handling for the most parts. And then lastly, what we will also need to do is deploy everything. So for the deployment, what we will do is hosting Shopware and Strapi on uh, Hetzner, Next.js on Vercel. That's the plan. <laughs> so, so that's what we are building. So now the question is, what shop exactly are we building? And the shop that we are building is called Krautkugel. So you might be wondering what that means. It's, it's basically a candy shop like herbal herbal candy. So we won't do that uh, from one to another day. So that will take time, but it will be a series. If you're interested in that, um, make sure to subscribe and like this video. It's gonna be very, very interesting, fun ride. That's it for today. Uh, thanks and see you.